Welcome to our Lent course, Come Home, as we explore the great covenants in the Bible and ask about how they're relevant in our lives today. The aim of these short videos is to interview our Sunday preachers and use them as a springboard for our self-study or our group discussions on this theme. So, enjoy. So friends, tonight I'm interviewing Stephen. As you know, Steve uh, was did our message on Sunday, the sermon. Thank you for doing that, Steve. Thank you for putting some time in your busy schedule aside just to share with us some of your thoughts and insights. And I really enjoyed a fresh take that you made on some of the material before us. There was a statement you made at the towards the end of your sermon where you kind of suggested that Paul is really challenging the Galatians that our God is in the business of giving people what they don't deserve. Explain that a bit more. Remind me what you were saying there and maybe how this links into this whole Mosaic Covenant idea. Thanks, Kevin. Um, yeah, good to connect. So I think when people approach the Old Testament, they've got a view that, that God had a different DNA there or a different way of operating. Um, and uh, especially the Mosaic Covenant um, is, is seen as, as a set of rules. And, and, that's, and that, that view robs us of, a, of, of an understanding of God's grace. So that's why I've tried to pair it with Galatians, something that's more familiar to us. Mm. The, the lovely thing about Galatians is that um, we all know Galatians 5 and the fruits of the Spirit, mm. a, a wonderful passage. It, it comes after Paul has, has told the Galatians basically how foolish and undeserving they are. Um, so it's the same message that, that the, the gifts and the fruits of the Spirit come to people who, who don't deserve them. And, and that's really the core of the gospel message. God is in the business of giving people what they don't deserve. And, and that's the same principle we must read when, when looking at the Mosaic Covenant. It's not about earning God's grace. It's about receiving it. Mm -hmm, yeah. No, thank you. When I was doing the, the Abrahamic Covenant a week or so ago, I just realized there was so much material that I had to make choices about what I left out and what I included. Was there one sort of thing you would have loved to kind of explore but really couldn't that you wanted to share a little bit with us tonight? Kevin, this is this is an intimidating uh, video interview because behind you is a is a wall full of books, but but I'm, I've got I've got nothing to show for myself here, you know. <laughs> so I hope people uh, take me seriously. Um, Kevin, I, I, I'm passionate about the Old Testament, and of course we know that it's it's the Old Testament prepares our hearts for the message of Jesus. I, I guess, you know, I'd like to explore that more. I, I, I went the route of, of putting some thoughts out there that might have got people thinking, maybe a little bit more controversial. But at the end of the day, it's just so important how we understand uh, the gift of, of himself on the cross um, and how we see that being prepared for us in the Mosaic covenant yeah so it's something I would, I would love to have spent more time on so i'm hoping that what i presented was like a thought starter mm. people can go okay I, I didn't really think about uh the mosaic covenant that way let me go back and look at those commandments relationally rather than kind of as as conditional instructions you know maybe take a different view and and yes so uh, you would be encouraging those listening as part of their own bible study to do exactly that. Um, you said oh, look, some... Kevin, I mean, I, I wanna, I wanna, just to say something there, part of the challenge of scripture is, is getting over our own preconceived ideas we take to it. So, yeah, I mean, I think grace is a gift. Uh, and, 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 and so it's not so much about, I think it, there's a bit of sweating, uh, doing some yards in the Old Testament. But it's really uh, about asking God to bless us with, with, with insight. You know, um, I think there's, 
there's so much in the world today that conditions us away from grace. Grace is such a foreign language. So I guess I'm, I'm challenging people, don't go and, and study the Bible with all those presuppositions that, that you've got outside of it. It's, it's, not, uh, <laughs> it's, not, it's not like cooking to a recipe. If you follow these instructions, you'll find revelation. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's good because people do see it as that, don't they? Um, often the Bible for a lot of people, unfortunately, is a kind of cookbook. Get the mix right and you're in heaven. Um, yeah. Look, I, I can't blame people. I mean, that's been my mindset for, for well, I guess it's still in, 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 in the sense it is part of my mindset. I think that's how we all train. Um, I just, you know, recently in, in my st studies around scripture, I've just found myself confronted with ideas that have really challenged me to the core and, and opened up more of God's grace to me. And I just thought, gee, I thought those days were past. Mm -hmm. um, but they came as a gift, as a surprise. I just, I just found myself going like, gee, I, you know, yeah. I, I didn't expect that. So that, that's the gift that, that we, I mean, Lent and Easter, that's the gift that we're after. We, we, we're hoping to to come away saying, hey, surely this man is the son of God and, and receive that blessing. Amen. Amen. Now, you, you, you're known for saying things that we have to pause and think about, and you like stirring the pot a little bit. There was one sort of thing you said, and I think it, it, people need to talk about it, and I think we need more explanation. It went something like this. You asked a kind of question. Is it possible that the founders of our contemporary worldview have stolen from us a dependence and humility before God. They have sowed seeds of doubt that we must earn our way into God's blessing. What are you challenging us with there? Uh, Kevin, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm passionate about history and particularly about the history of thought and particularly about the, the history of theology and uh, in our past there, there's uh, there's a period where the self the individual displaced god as as center stage I, I guess if you had to if you had to pinpoint somebody i mean descartes would would be among them but their legacy you know john locke descartes emmanuel Kant, and and, and many others and, and we we are um, perhaps unwitting inheritors of that of that worldview it's been so deeply ingrained to our society into our way of thinking that we can't unthink it but that mindset does rob you of of a dependence on god it it, it trains you to think uh, that you are um, at the center of the universe i mean that's what individualism is and, and, and for me, I'm growing, uh, my understanding of that is, is, is growing and, and I'm coming to believe that that is perhaps one of the biggest um, diseases that we as a church are confronted with. Uh, it's a mindset that, that puts people at the center of the universe. I'm personally challenged by that and I just thought I'd, I'd share that challenge with, with, uh, with the congregation. And maybe in your groups or as you reflect on your own, each of you want to think about the problem of individualism in your own faith journey and what it, and how we grow in our dependence upon God. That's a very useful uh, set of reflection. But uh, Moses, this covenant of God with Moses, what do you want people to discuss in their little group tonight or if they're on their own? What sort of thought do you want them to play around with? Kevin, you know, maybe to talk about preconceived ideas of, of the covenant, how they've understood the Ten Commandments um, uh, in growing up in their faith. Um, I've, I've put a comment in there that the Ten Commandments are not about what we give. They're about what we get. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I think, if anything, it's in, in, in what way are... Are the preconceptions being challenged here? 
And if they think that I'm, I'm, I'm out of line, it would be good for them to discuss that. Yeah, yeah. They're also welcome to, to discuss it with me. I, I'm happy to share my email address and, and anybody who wants a longer conversation, I'd, I'd love to have it, but, but the group is a good place to start. And thank you for that. As you all know that I've encouraged you to get involved in the conversation. And these little chats with the preachers, it's just try and stimulate some discussion in your groups. Um, and so do that. Steve, thanks so much. Do you have a final kind of word for us just to kind of give us a hope or a challenge or an encouragement? Oh, Kevin, thanks for, for putting the course together. I, I, I think the alignment of coming home uh, and it, this, this reflection sits so well within the preparation for, for Easter. And I think the prayer of, of all of us is that we can just open our hearts more to, uh, to the love of God and, and to his purposes for us. Mm. Um, and in, in many senses, that's going to require something quite miraculous. And yeah, that would be my prayer for myself and my prayer for, for all of us is that the spirit works guarding our hearts and our minds and, and opening us up more to, to who he is and, and, and how he wants us to live as a community. So I, I guess I'm, I hope it's been helpful. Uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. One correction, it was Michael Schaefer put the course together for us. <laughs> okay. And, and, but, um, it, and that's been great. So I've enjoyed his contribution and yours. It's always good having you preach. We don't get you preaching as much as we, we can. So thank you so much for doing that. Would you close for us in, in a prayer, please? Great. Lord, as we prepare our hearts and our minds to celebrate Easter, more than anything, we, we want to see you more clearly and uh, love you more dearly. So, Lord, we, we really ask for an intervention uh, through your spirit, that we may come and, and, and meet with you. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks, everybody. Hopefully we've stimulated some good thinking and discussion. Uh, thanks again, Steve. Yeah, thanks, Kevin. Thanks, everyone.